janitor, they said. It pays well, they said. Stuck here all day, only person in this whole stupid building. Can't even find the dumb vending machine. Where the heck is that guy who talks on the radio? He's always here, ain't he? Isn't he supposed to be on air right now? Forget being a jander, I'll take over for the radio guy. Probably pays better anyhow. If I could just figure out how any of this works. The light is on, so... Is it live? Oh god, am I on air right now? The... Hello? Um, uh, I get, uh, I found this tape on the floor earlier where the vending machine was a few days ago. I have no idea what's on it, but I suppose we'll find out. Listeners, if you can hear me, it means that this tape somehow made it back to my studio and someone is playing it for you now. After I put my quarters into the vending machine to buy back the photo of myself, I was transported to this beach. The machine suddenly had a cassette tape for sale, this time much cheaper than the last. Luckily, I carry my handheld tape recorder with me everywhere. And so, here I am, reporting directly from the scene of the staff vending machine as I try to figure out what's going on. The picture of myself has been safely stashed in my pocket for the time being. I still can't figure out how I exist both in the picture and here, speaking to you all. In the meantime, I have to figure out how to get off of this beach and hopefully back to my studio. I left all the rest of the photos on my desk at the studio, and once I get back, I'll figure out how to get everyone else back, too. Oh, and before I go, to whoever put the tape in at the studio, I don't know how much radio hosting experience you have, but that hardly matters at this point. You may want to mute the microphone between segments, otherwise the entire audience will hear you breathe, cough, eat lunch, the whole nine yards. For the sake of entertainment, Please press the stop button on the cassette player after I go for now, and run some music, give them some commentary. I don't know, it's your show for right now. Keep my audience engaged. And for the love of God, play some music behind your likely boring speaking, would you? I'll be back as soon as I'm able. Uh, he said to stop the tape, so, uh, did you think he sounded kind of threatening when he said to keep y'all engaged? That guy scares the crap out of me sometimes. You know, nobody really knows him. He just sort of is there. Nobody really sees him come and go on a normal schedule. He just pops up when you least expect him. He once interviewed a bunch of the janitorial staff live on air somehow, even though there were no microphones, and then he just disappeared. But, uh, I guess I'll, uh, this button says advertisement. weird that wasn't really advertising for anything but i think the next time i go to the store i'll buy some new pencils that sounds nice uh i guess we'll see what else is on this tape listeners i have found myself inside of the little rock zoo at first i was concerned about being here since i hadn't paid to enter but no one has stopped me or even looked in my direction I haven't strayed too far from the staff vending machine, which seems to add a new item every single time I purchase one. It is possible that it is completely incapable of running out. Yet, despite how eventful all its items have been thus far, it seems to be trying to return to its default state of snacks. The last thing I purchased was some Cheetos cheese snacks. And now I'm at the zoo. Perhaps there is a connection here. Hold on one moment. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry, could you spare a quarter? No, that's all right. Thank you anyway. I don't know what I've done to ensure that no one speaks to me, but it's getting quite tiresome. I'm going to go look for more quarters. The next item to purchase in the machine appears to be a candy bar called a moon bar, so we'll see what happens.
This is the part where whoever is sitting in my studio operating my station presses the stop button and provides some form of entertainment, news, or education. Why does he have to be so threatening right at the end like that? Well, I don't know much about the news. Besides the fact that this building is empty, that's pretty weird. It's broad daylight on a weekday. You'd think there'd be staff in here somewhere. How does he work like this? There are so many pictures on this desk here. Hold on, that's John! So he's got pictures of staff members, huh? Anyways, I guess I've talked long enough. Here's the tape again. Listeners, I swear this doesn't make any sense. Right now, I admit I am panicking just a little. I am clinging for dear life to the side of the staff vending machine with one hand and my tape recorder with the other. It appears as though I am floating through space. I don't know how I'm able to breathe or not freeze out here, but there is absolutely no gravity, and now I just need to get this machine to accept my 75 cents for what appears to be a library book inside. I will return as soon as I am able, if I am able, but for now, if whoever is in my studio knows what they are doing, they will take you now to the weather. The weather? The weather? What? Oh, oh, this button literally just says weather. Oh, okay, here we go. Listen, that last advertisement wasn't an ad, and I mean, that was kinda weather. This place is so weird. Okay, I kinda wanna know if that guy is okay. He sounded pretty weird on the last part of the tape. Listeners, I find myself, after having purchased that library book, in a very familiar, yet unfamiliar place. It is a library, but not my library. In fact, I believe that it is a rival library within my city. Now, libraries as default do not really have rivalries, as we are all here to serve the cities we work within, but this system being different, I feel compelled to, uh... There went some staff members. I'm going to hide my identification and go about this as though I am not a library employee. Uh, hello, yes, I seem to have, uh, run into a bit of trouble, and I'm looking for odd jobs I can do for quarters. Uh, hello? This is definitely strange, listeners. I swear, it's almost like no one can see me. Well, while I search the stacks here for lost quarters, I'll let you go back to your new host, whoever they are, and hopefully I'll be back and we'll have purchased the toy train from the machine and made it to whatever other location it wants to take me to. I am getting quite exhausted and worried about my fellow co-workers. All right, no time for complaining. I'll be back as soon as I can be. You know, if this tape is pre-recorded, I wonder where he's at now. Well, uh, here's another advertisement so he doesn't get mad at me somehow. Are you a library employee? Are you hungry? Thirsty? No problem. Simply locate the staff vending machine, insert quarters, and select from various ever-changing snack and drink choices. The staff vending machine always appears where you need it most. So all you need to do is feel desperately hungry and you'll find it in a closet or behind the desk or in your office. The staff vending machine, always around when you need it. This advertisement has been brought to you by Mysterious Library Upper Management. Man, that's really weird because I haven't seen that vending machine in days. There's still a little more on this tape, and now I'm real curious. Let's see what's up. I have discovered that the items in the vending machine do seem to correlate to the place I will find myself in, at least for now. The last thing I purchased was a miniature train. Now I find myself standing in the middle of a train yard. It's the dead of night, which is strange because just moments ago at the library it was broad daylight. What's even more odd than the machine's newfound love of sending me on some sort of wild goose chase is the fact that not a single soul has spoken to me this entire time, or even seemed to acknowledge my existence. I see a gentleman walking along the tracks a good distance away, that's sort of odd. What a well-dressed man, out here in the middle of the night? 
strange listeners he is calling to. Sir, you can hear me. Oh, thank goodness you can hear me. What am I doing here? I could ask you the same, sir. I find myself a bit lost, you see, and in desperate need of quarters. A deal? What sort of a deal? Oh, no, no, thank you. I don't think I should have... Uh, uh, participate in that sort of thing. You see, I've got to get back to work. Thank you, anyway. He's completely gone. That was terribly odd. Listeners, that odd man was the only person to have seen me since I touched the vending machine. It seems almost as though I am invisible to everyone else. I'm beginning to develop a theory. Whoever is in my studio right now, presumably listening to this tape as they play it for my audience, I may need your help. I'm going to go test my theory. I'll be back as soon as I can be. Me? He wants my help? What am I supposed to do? Oh, there's a light flashing in here. It says traffic. So, uh, I guess we're going to traffic now. Oh, there's a teleprompter. It says, road's looking fairly clear today around... Wait, you're not Victor. Wait, how does it know who I... Now it says... Your presence is unauthorized in the studio. What? No traffic for you! Well, dang. Okay, then. No traffic for us. Let's just get back to the tape. I think I've got it figured out. Nobody can see me. Nobody can hear me. I think that touching the vending machine threw me into an alternate dimension. I don't think I'd be visible to the human eye right now. Which explains my presence in the picture. I am technically, right now, speaking to you from inside the photo. Which is funny, since I'm also holding the photo as we speak. Don't think about it too hard. I've also noticed that on the back of my photo is a barcode. I don't know what it does. And that's where you come in, whoever is sitting in my studio chair right now. I've also noticed that the length of the money slot in the machine is the same length as the photos. If I am right, and I don't exist in the same dimension as the library anymore, don't think about it too hard, then I won't be able to return on my own. There is nothing left to purchase in the machine. But perhaps intent is what's fueling its idea of where to take people. I'm about to try to insert my photo into the machine, in hopes that it will return to the library, most likely without me. Which is where you come in. I can't tell you exactly what to do, but I need you to find a way to get everyone out of the photos you see scattered on my desk. All right, there's no time to waste. Here goes nothing. What? Pictures on the desk? Okay, I, uh, whoa. Oh, here he is. This is a picture of Victor. God, he looks straight out of the 30s or something. What do I do? There's another light blinking. Victor, I don't know how any of this stuff works. Barcodes? Wait, I have an idea. I just need... Hold on. barcode scanner. Let me just hook it up. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, thank God. Finally, thank you. You saved me from wherever it was that I was. I did it. I did it. You're back. All right there, Superman. Careful with that head of yours. But really, thank you. Without you, who knows what the fate of our library and our radio station would have been. Of course, but, but oh my how... Oh god, you left the microphone on! We are live on air right now! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Okay, get out of my studio. What? Out. Out of my studio. I have radio things to do. Let's go. But, but, but I just... You're a hero. I know. It's all very special. Now it's time to go. Listeners, I'm back. I have returned from... Whatever that was. Alternate dimension, weird world inside of photographs, whatever it was, I have returned from it. And now, to put my library back in order. This may take a while. Now, I'm going to do this while listening back over recordings of today's show to see what kind of, uh, entertainment happened in my absence. 
As we reach the end of an eventful time, I want to thank you all for lending me your ear for the evening, and for putting up with whatever your temporary host put you through. Have a wonderful evening, listeners, and as always, stay tuned.